eBay sellers, and welcome to episode number 41 of eBay the Right Way. This is your last episode of 2021. Yes, I'm one of those people that goes around at New Year's time saying, this is the last time you're going to do this this year, or the next time you do that, it'll be the next year. <laughs> So anyway, today's date is December 29th, 2021, and our guest today is Tina, who has been selling on eBay over 20 years, so she has a lot of great information to share. We had a little chat that is not part of the recording that I just wanted to share with you because this was really a great question. Tina said, why do you use your middle initial? I usually introduce myself as Suzanne A. Wells, and that's just part of my branding. The real story is that when I was creating my website and my branding, there was a Suzanne Wells who is a yoga instructor in Australia, and she had a bunch of stuff on the internet. And then there was another Suzanne Wells who wrote books about botany. So I was differentiating myself so that when I was Googled in the future, people would find me. But I really like to use the reason that I want to be like Susan B. Anthony and just have that middle initial or Samuel L. Jackson or Michael J. Fox. There are a lot of celebrities and famous people that use their middle initial. And I could even take it one step further and just go by Suzanne and be like Cher or Madonna and just only have one name. <laughs> so that part of the conversation did not get recorded. But I wanted to share that because people do ask, why do you use your middle initial? And it's a branding thing. So useless information probably, but now I've explained it. <laughs> okay, at this point, we will get into the conversation with Tina. Okay, listeners, today we have the illustrious Tina Wozniak, a.k.a the catalog lady, which we will explain later, <laughs> joining us to share all of her insight on eBay selling. And how are you on this Saturday morning, Tina? Uh, a little overcast, but not too bad for December being 60 degrees. <laughs> you know, it's very overcast here in Atlanta and it's 60 degrees. And yeah. yesterday I couldn't even see five feet in front of me. It was so foggy and so um, dreary. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's where we are. And where are you located? I am in uh, southeastern Ohio, about 45 minutes outside of the capital of Columbus. Okay. Okay. And we're going to get into the really tough questions about eBay. <laughs> okay. um, when did you start selling? Um, I can't give an exact date. I know when I bought my first item on eBay was October of 1998. Mm. Um, and I know shortly thereafter, probably within a couple of years, I tried to buy a like wholesale lot of lingerie to resell off of an eBay seller. Unfortunately, uh, every excuse in the book, I never got it. So PayPal had to give me my money back. Um, because I never got the product. And so, but then a couple of years later, um, my former husband, um, he worked for a company that made those vintage reproduction tin signs. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to sell off the scratch and dent seconds. So I did that a little bit. Um, his family owned a laundromat and I would sell off some of the clothes that were left once oh, so fun. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then somehow I ended up selling off at that, they were all around in the same time frame. I ended up selling off and I don't remember how I got, how I ended up with this person, but I, I did a consignment even back then in the early two thousands on an alfa Romeo spider engine. 
wow. Yeah, and I don't even remember. I just remember what it was. <laughs> so I I started selling on in the two thousand early two thousands, but it was more of as needed, hit and miss. I didn't stay with it until the last four years as as a continuous. Okay, well, I want to go back to the dry cleaning situation. <laughs> with a laundromat, not even a dry oh, I'm cleaner. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, because when I sort of fell into mentoring, which I never planned to do it, I just mm -hmm. was an early adopter like you, and people started asking me questions. So I started a blog answering them. Mm -hmm. And one of the things was, where do you find inventory? And where I live, it's not hard, but... Yeah. I thought, well, maybe they don't, not everyone has the same experience. So I was like, well, you know, you can always go to a dry cleaner and buy what's left behind, mm -hmm. which I don't know why people do that. You know, they move and they forget to take their dry, their clothes with yeah. them. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so yeah. did you find anything really good at the laundromat? Um, the interest, I had one interesting one. I remember, I don't remember many other pieces. There was a, um, a men's overalls, like you see on railroaders, um, mm -hmm. the, the denim overalls, it was huge, big size. And I put them up for, I, I think it was auction back then. I don't remember. It had to be auction back then. And um, the guy paid almost $60 for them because of the size. And they, I shipped them to Scotland. So, and I asked him why, and he said, because he can't find that size in Scotland. So, yeah, so he paid almost as much in shipping as he paid for the item for a used set of denim overalls. So you were an early adopter of international shipping as well. Yeah, one of my, yeah, my first, that, I, I might've had others, but I, that's my first one I remember of, of going to Scotland, yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And was that laundromat a source of inventory for very long? You know, I don't, <clears throat> I don't remember using it much, even though, like I said, it was my former in-laws. Um, they, I, I, I remember doing hit and miss pieces, but it probably didn't last me more than a year. Um, and yeah, I don't, like I said, I, I honestly don't remember. <laughs> it's been so long ago. It's been 20 years. You know? I know I'm like that too. And I, like you tried the bulk buying lingerie yeah. in Atlanta, North of Atlanta, there is a place called lingerie Mart. Mm -hmm. And I just found it one day. I just drove by it and yeah. I thought, what is that? So I checked it out and they sold Victoria's Secret swimwear, all kinds of lingerie, just, you know, basic, not all of it was, you know, sexy stuff. It was just mm -hmm. your basic stuff. And I did buy a few lots to sell and eh, it was okay. I ended up trading the Victoria's Secret swimwear for babysitting for my kids. <laughs> The teenagers in the neighborhood, like I would have a mother's helper come over and I was home. I was just busy and she would take the kids outside and watch them and that kind of thing. And instead of paying her in money, she was very interested in trading for swimwear. <laughs> nice. So, Hey, you got to do what you got to do. But that was, that was an interesting situation. So I think when you're in this business a long time, you try everything just to see, yeah. hey, how does that work? Yeah, I'm not, a, I, I, I worked at Victoria's Secret Corporate many years ago. Really? So I used to be able to go, they used to have warehouse sales and, you know, now being an eBay seller, I kind of wish I could still go into those warehouse sales. <laughs> Next year, 2022 is Pink's 20th anniversary, the Victoria's oh. Secret Pink hmm. line, which was developed for preteens. Yeah. Who, sort of transition them into the regular stuff when they got older to make them a customer for life kind of thing. So, I was, I was, the, I was during the, when they brought out the angel series. Okay. Okay. So those that little Victoria's secret pink dogs, the little dog that was their, their symbol. Um, mm. They have little stuffed ones like plush mm. and mm. all different sizes. Those are collectible. Mm. 
So um, you see it on the the hoodies and stuff. The oh yeah yeah okay. the dog symbol. So my prediction is that in 2022 we're going to have the spotlight on oh it's their 20th anniversary and here's all these things to commemorate it and you know maybe it'll end up like the plastic Starbucks cups that sell for two hundred dollars. <laughs> Well, and something else. I just I drove by last night the the where I used to work, the corporate office yesterday, and now they've got a sign out that says "Congratulations on Victoria's Secret and Bath and Body Works being their own entities." So they are no longer I'm obviously under the a limited umbrella, I guess. So who knows what's going to happen now? They're, they've kind of split. I don't know. Interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I just they had a big old flashing sign out front of the, in front of the of the building. So, and I hadn't been on that side of town in years, so I didn't, you know, it because I left. I had moved out of the country. Not out of the country. I'd moved out of the state many many. Kind years of out ago. of the country. <laughs> yeah, well, people thought when you live in Wyoming, they think you live out of the oh, country. Oh, you lived in Wyoming. Yeah, my my former husband um, and the and the laundromat were all in Wyoming. I was in Wyoming for twelve years. What, what town, city? Sheridan. Okay. It's about 20 minutes south of the Montana border. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I visited out there in 2006, the, the man I was with who died last year. He was a chef. And so he got a job on a ranch mm -hmm. out there. Um, what was it near? Jackson Hole, I guess. But near Jackson in Wyoming, Hole. it's very relative. It was at least two hours from Jackson Hole. <laughs> uh, Star Valley. <laughs> Um, Pinedale. Pinedale. Okay. Yeah. I know um, where that is. So I did, that was my one trip out there. I'd love to go back, mm -hmm. but it is, um, it's you know, we, we drove three hours to is it Idaho Falls to go mm -hmm. to Walmart <laughs> to, to buy supplies mm -hmm. for the ranch and food. And he was in charge of all that stuff. So, well, I had a, there was a Walmart in Sheridan at the time there was even a Kmart. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, Wyoming is big country. <laughs> yeah, I miss it. I do. I miss it. Uh, it's beautiful out there. I loved that visit. Yeah. So, okay, back to eBay. Let's talk about what you sell. Do you have any <laughs> kind of specialty? Um, no, actually, <laughs> um, we. I should say we don't, um, because it, it's actually a conglomeration. My mother, my husband, and I. Uh, my mother and I list, I call her the um, CCLO. Uh, she's the chief car listing officer because she lists all the, like the, most of the um, Hot Wheels cars and things because they're very simple for her. She just, she has a whole setup. She just does it. Um, my husband is acquisitions because he is the Hot Wheels collector. So we, um, we do that. And then I list and I help ship and I take care of the financial and yeah, and, and I do all the difficult stuff. If it's if it takes more research, I do the work. So we don't really have a niche per se. I just whatever makes money. So, I love how you have titles because that's kind of the way my day goes. It's like, okay, today, well, for the next 30 minutes, I'm going to be doing correspondence. And then I'm the correspondence expert. And then I'm going to be the um, shipping person. And then I'm going to be the errand runner. And then I'm going to, you know, you do all the different um, parts of your business. Change those hats out. Absolutely. And it, I don't know, it's just kind of fun to, to make up names for yourself. In fact, I was, I was in a grocery store one time. And this kid was stocking the shelves and he had his name tag on mm -hmm. and it's, it was like Joe redistribution specialist. And I was <laughs> yeah. like, I've never seen that title. What is that? He's like, Oh, I made it up. I just take stuff from the back and put it on the shelf. So I'm just a redistribution specialist. It makes me sound really important. <laughs> I mean, that's what eBay sellers are. That's what just, kind of what we are. We yeah, take it from the thrift store and then put it yeah. on our, our store and then ship it to somebody. <laughs> exactly. Moving stuff around like ants, just carrying it around from place to place. <laughs> I just, uh, vintage, I do vintage acquisitions. And where do you get your stuff to sell? Um, you know, it's interesting. It's again, uh, everywhere. Um, I am like you and others I've listened to on your, on your pods podcast 
I don't, I, I don't spend hours in, in Goodwills and thrift stores. I can't, they drive me batty. Um, I will go in and I'll do my little route and I'll go through and I'll see what I like and then I'm done. Um, but we do a lot of estate sales, a lot of estate auctions because we're in the country. It's a lot smaller in regards to the estates, the estate sales, they're older. And, and I don't think they stay up on a lot of things. Um, so we end up getting a lot of really good deals. On they, they, they don't know what the pricing should be. They're just trying to clear it out. Yeah. Or they are. They're very laser focused. We went to one um, where they knew the toys they had had value. But they didn't look at everything else. And they left a lot on the table. So we do a lot of that. Um, the uh, We do. My, uh, we bought a lot of collections. Um, we buy collections out like we bought out, of, uh, actually we bought out several uh, large Hot Wheels collections. Um, so my husband takes what he wants and then we, you know, we list what he doesn't want. So uh, we bought out a five by five by 10 storage unit stacked floor to ceiling of Hot Wheels. And, and I've been seeing those sales. They've been like over a hundred dollars. Those actually are not from that. <laughs> oh. Okay, well, that's, that's from another auction. From? <laughs> yeah, that one came from an auction in West Virginia because we're only about an hour and a half down into part of West Virginia, and um, so those those hundred dollar ones came from um, an auction in, in in West Virginia that I went with my husband, and I'm like, why are they paying so much for these cars? I don't believe how much they're paying for these cars. This, you know, and and he's like, I, I got this, and I've learned to trust him. It's very hard, but I've learned to trust him on these cars because he knows his cars. And yeah, they're 100. I was blown away. 100, 120, $180 for these cards from cars from what, 2007, 2005. They're so, new in the package Hot Wheels. Yeah, those are, yeah. And we sell a lot of loose too. Um, and then we also have sold, we sell uh, for a couple of friends of ours on consignment. Um we have one that she was a Longenberger consultant for years because right we're right here at Longenberger. It's just 15 minutes to the basket. Oh, lucky you. <laughs> so where they have the big old basket, they don't, you know, they're not in business anymore, but so she has room full of Longenberger new stuff. So um, my mom handles that. And then I just randomly find things in my barn. Okay. Yeah. We need to talk about that because... <laughs> I think it might have been 2019. It's been a while. You started posting on the Money Making Mondays catalogs, old <laughs> Sears and JCPenney catalogs. And I was watching that. I mean, I don't always comment, but I'm yeah. watching. <laughs> and I was like, what is this lady? Where is she finding all these catalogs? And they would sell for so much money because they're so old and they're collectible and they have pictures of all the old stuff, fashion, mm -hmm. you know, maybe somebody leaning against an old car, um, yep. toys, you know, everything in it is, is vintage and those are highly collectible. So mm -hmm. I started calling you the catalog lady. <laughs> <laughs> and you you explained that you bought this new place property and this stuff was all in there so I want to hear the whole story well the actually the JC Penney's and Sears catalogs came from my husband's grandmother she oh. had an entire chest that we found catalogs in and my uh, father-in-law at the time he said he's deceased now but he he had said we're just going to throw them in the bonfire and I went no 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 I can sell these <laughs> <laughs> You're burning money. Don't do that. <laughs> after, but it was so funny because after that, my father-in-law would start going, can I, could we sell this? Can you sell it? So it just, it started a whole trend, but those came from a trunk we found of uh, his, but the, there, I do have catalogs, just a different kind of catalog in my barn. Um, yeah. When we, we bought this place in 2015 and there are um, two houses, um, two houses, two garages, a pond, um, and I call it the barn, but it was actually a pottery workshop. And it was, we actually have an old pottery kiln on our property too, a big brick pottery kiln. Oh, so wow. we are the first non-potters on this property since the early 1800s. And they left when the, when the people that lived here before us lived here 92 years so they went from the parents to the oldest, to the next, to the next, to the next, until the last one died in 2015. And so when we showed up for the auction here 
to, cause it was going to be an auction before that to look at it. They had two very, those huge, like mega size construction dumpsters. They were throwing things in. Oh. I am trying, <laughs> I was trying to go. I'm like, oh, look, my mom's going, don't get in there. Get out of there. I'm trying to crawl into the dumpster. You're trying to save these things. I'm trying to save <laughs> <laughs> so so then we go to the auction and and um the, the I'm like man there's a lot of stuff and the auctioneer goes you pay us if you pay us two hundred thousand dollars we will walk away right now and you can have everything on the property we didn't but there were some things left in the attic of the of the barn which had been their workshop for the pottery they had all of their old um, decorator catalogs. They had all of their old whatevers they had. Na National Geographics from the 20s and 30s, Collier's, um, all kinds of things like that that had got left. And then the workshop downstairs. So um, so that's why, it, yeah, I have strange things still in my barn. Um, and I randomly will go walk through the attic or the workshop and I will pick up something, just randomly pick up something that I'm like, I'm never going to use and check to see if it has value. And that's I'm sure that's, there's things that you don't even know what they are. Mm -mm. Pottery yeah. making things or just old items that, huh, this is interesting. I wonder what yeah. this is. <laughs> yeah. And that's kind of where it's happened. And one of them happened to be a, um, well, they, they obviously, somebody traveled. I think one of the, the daughters, the oldest girl had been married to an ambassador, I found in the research. And so I think she probably sent things as she traveled. And one of the things I, I sold was a 1920s um, Kentucky Derby program. Um, okay. I sold that. And that was, I, I think I sold it for $175. Did you post that one? I yep. think I remember that. I was like, it's just yeah. paper. It's just yeah. paper. Yeah. Yeah. You you put it in your, yeah, that was like the first time I think you commented on my barn saying you wanted to know what was out <laughs> through my barn. <laughs> I know. It's like us eBay sellers. It's it's the secret society of people that just want to go through stuff. It's like, oh, you, you pass a, a house on the, on the road and they've got a dumpster. Oh, they're moving. What are they putting in there? Oh my gosh. I wonder if I gave them a hundred dollars if they let me just go through it. Yep, yep. <laughs> it's just the, the curiosity kills you because stuff is everywhere. Yes. Yeah. And so that's, that's really what that is. And, um, you know, like I found, a you know, old pencils that were from like the 1950s and, um, sold those on there and, you know, just, yeah, random, Oh, there's one I just, just sold finally the other day. It was a 1930s program from the uh, Chicago Brookfield Zoo. Wow. So, yeah, it was like, I, I just, yeah, if I get bored with my other like thousand pound of Legos that I have to sell um, or Hot Wheels, um, I randomly just walk through and find something that intrigues me. I, I call them my boredom busters because I will look at them and read through them and then I'll list them. How much would you charge me to come stay with you for a week and go through your? <laughs> you know, that's the stuff that's left. That's not even counting what we've put in that barn. I'm, I, I'm, I have money piles. Um, I, I have a friend that I'm helping whose mom passed away, and um, she's it kind of has all fallen on her to yeah. to go through everything, and just she just pulls stuff out. Oh, found this in the attic sold it for a hundred dollars, found this, found that. And it's just amazing to me what sells, but the benefit for you is you don't have the personal connection with the items. You don't, you don't have that emotional part. That's so hard when, Oh, this was my mom's recipe book. And this is all her handwriting or those yeah. kind of things that are so personal. Yeah. It's just hard when it's, it's your own family. And that emotional part is, uh, Sometimes you just have to put it down and walk away. You just can't do it. So it, it's kind of interesting that you you just have this museum available to you <laughs> where, where you don't know the history of, of what happened. You just find these cool things and sell them. Yeah, yeah. That's why when you also, you'll see me post, cost me zero. <laughs> right, yeah, I saw that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we just, we do, we, we do whatever, you know, we... 
I, and that's that's the fascination to eBay for me, is that, you know, there's something for almost everybody. And you don't have to be a collector. I, I have a friend that does retail arbitrage on Amazon. And I mean, she's she we're talking hundred thousand dollar a year retail arbitrage on Amazon. And she's like, I don't know why you don't do it. And I said, and I don't know why you don't do eBay. And we come to a realization, she prefers new product. I prefer used product yes. because I like, I like the history. I like the history of most things. And she doesn't want to deal with, you know, touching like used clothes or whatever. I don't either normally. I don't like selling clothes, mm -hmm. but we just, and it works for us. Well, I totally understand that because over the past couple of years, I've taken a really good hard look at my business and what I do every day. And especially mm -hmm. last year, losing someone that was really close to me, I just, mm -hmm. after I got through the grief, I just said, you know what, how, how do I want the rest of my life to look? Yeah. I, I try to only do things that bring me joy. And I, I did Amazon for a while when that was the new and upcoming thing. And it really is just like a mouse on a wheel. Yes, you can make great money. She does. I make great nice. money, but there's a lot of risk because you may buy a pallet of something. It doesn't allow that or yeah. it gets too competitive and you can't even make what you paid for it. And there was a lot of that going on that things beyond your control, no matter how hard you worked or how much you knew, there were too many factors that could just slam you and you wake up one day and, oh, Amazon doesn't allow that anymore. You know, yeah. so I'm like you with the older stuff. I just love the history. I love doing the research and figuring it out. And uh, back to the catalogs, I know you sold some of those for over a hundred dollars. Mm -mm. um no yeah I think you're confused there was another person that had some really old ones okay on well mine you, were you, in the 30s for 30 okay. to 45 dollar range you did have the older JC Penney catalogs and yeah they were in the 45 dollars when I see that yeah I remember my three siblings and I when that catalog <laughs> came if it was Sears or JC Penney's and this was back yeah. in the 70s yes um we each had a turn with the catalog, circling what we wanted and for Christmas. And of course, my little sister, she circled everything because <laughs> you know, she disguised the limit. And I'm think as the middle child, I'm like, you know, you're lucky if you get three of them. You know, it's <laughs> but that those were the memories of the world is your oyster. Anything yeah. is possible. You can circle anything you want and you might get it. And so it's the nostalgia. Yeah. And I learned that Montgom the Montgomery Wards um, ones didn't sell as well as the J.C. Penney's ones. Okay. So I figured maybe that's why when we moved here, we we found them in the um, outhouse. <laughs> oh, those were the bathroom reading ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or toilet paper magazines. <laughs> yep. Oh, that's funny. Well, I mean, another five years. Somebody, yeah. they may go up in value because vintage items only get more vintage. Yeah. So if you have vintage items listed that aren't moving, just give it some time. Mm -hmm. Maybe in a few years, they're going to be more desired. You just, you yeah. just don't know what's going to happen. And going back to those Starbucks tumblers, <laughs> those plastic, yeah. I mean, it's plastic. It's not... Yeah like it's some beautiful Lennox porcelain. It's just, mm -hmm. it's just plastic. And I used to never look at the plastic aisle at Goodwill. And I, I check that now twice while I'm in there. Like, have they put anything else out? Because yeah. I'm determined to find one of those collectible or one or more or many. <laughs> it's like somebody just needs to yeah. donate their whole collection and I would yeah. find it, you know? So, yeah, I've only so. found one and it wasn't the plastic ones. It was just one of the, the ones from another country. So the, I sold the mugs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like the Starbucks city mugs. Yeah. I found one of those and, 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 I'm, and of course I was like, all oh, right, I'm all excited. And it happened to be one of the cities that didn't sell as high as everything else. Isn't that weird? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh man. <laughs> I sold one for 85 one time and it was like Guatemala or some, oh, yeah. it, it wasn't what you would think of a classy posh city like Paris or Hong mm -hmm. Kong you know it was 
it was Honduras or Guatemala, one of those countries. Um, yeah. But yeah, you just never know what's going to be the next valuable thing. And mm-hmm. I think you're like me in that retail arbitrage. I'm not knocking it if that's for mm-hmm. you, but I got really bored with it. Yeah. Just, it was a lot of replenishing the same things. And after a while it's, you can only do something so long to make money. Yeah. Like if you, if you aren't passionate about it, you can keep doing it, but wouldn't it be great to also love it? Yeah. And that's how I am. I just, and that's why I, like I said, I have my board and busters after a while, if I'm listing, you know, my, my husband's love is Hot Wheels. And so if I'm listing it, then it's not my passion. So I have to, I go find something else and then I list it because it's, it's what gives me the joy. And I'm not one of those people that can list six, eight, 10, 12 things and sit there and do it. I list three and I'm like, I'm done. Because sometimes what I have to do may re- I have to, may have to research it for an hour. And right. yeah, so I'm like, mm. I'm, I'm done three. I'm out of here. Squirrel. You know, I, I call my squirrel mode. <laughs> yeah. I'm like that too. I don't know how people just sit at their computer and list all day long yeah. because like in the morning I do my creative and thinking work, like putting mm-hmm. together videos or courses or that thinking stuff. And then I'm like, yeah, I got to get away from this computer and I'll, I'll go to the aquatic center and go swimming or do my errands, go to the post office, blah, 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 and come back. And then after that, I'll take some pictures and list some things. And then around seven o'clock, I get a second wind to do something else on the computer and, you know, answer emails and all that stuff. So um, you have to break it up, but I I just don't know how these people just all day, 12 hours a day, they're just at their computer listing. Um, First of all, I can't, my, my arm cannot do that. Like I, yeah. my, I got a frozen shoulder problem and it's like, yeah. I got to get up and move around. And, um, but kudos to people that can, because yeah. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I wish I could list 20 items a day. I just, I just mentally can't do that. <laughs> and that's the great thing about eBay. And that's what I've appreciated, you know, cause like I said, I've not, I've only been really, we've only really had a store for about four years. And, but I've sold on and off for 20. And that's the thing, great thing about it is, is, you know, what, where can you get a a job per se, where you can come and go like that, where you can make your income, where you're not tied to telling your boss, I'm going to Florida for two weeks, or, um, you know, I, I want to sit on the beach in Bermuda and whatever, you know, so it's, it's, that's, and that's, that's, I've always been a very non-traditional person. Um, All of my jobs through the years have been very, except for Victoria's Secret, maybe um, very non-traditional. My background, I have a degree in construction. Um, I did electrical work, you know, and so I've always been very non-traditional and my parents were the same way. It's like at one point my dad stayed home and my mom worked full time. And another time my mom stayed home and my dad worked full time. So, you know, and then that's eBay fits that lifestyle for me. It's a very non-traditional, you know, people, when you say I'm a reseller, they question it. And, and that's why I like it because it fits around the life that I want, despite all the issues that eBay may have and the glitches and the changes, you know, I'm good with that. I'm okay. Roll with the punches because you know what? You get a new boss at work, you get a new supervisor, you get new codes of conduct, you get new guidelines. It's the same principle. You either do it or you move on. Yeah. And in the days before eBay, Mm -hmm. people had their antique stores, they had their, you know, Sanford and Son junk stores. (laughs) And I used to sell things through the newspaper and the one ads. Oh, wow. And when my daughter was born, I was in the corporate world and I was making great money. And, and then I just, I just couldn't stand to be away from her. I just, I never planned to be a stay at home mom. You know, this was, uh, early nineties. And that was not cool. You know, yeah. if you had a college degree, you, you needed to be out in the world working and nobody understood like, why are you staying at home? You, you could get a great job. And it's like, I'm miserable. 
I just want to be with my baby. And so um, this was a decision my ex-husband and I made together. And I'm like, I'm going to make this work. So I did, I sold stuff that we weren't using <laughs> through the one ads in the newspaper. One of them wow. was my uh, wedding gown. Oh, wow. And I had paid $200 to have it made. Always been a frugal person. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we got married in 88. This was in 94. And I sold it for 400. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I, and then like my fine china that I got for my wedding gifts, like we never used it. We just didn't mm -hmm. entertain. I sold some of that, you know, that was free. Mm -hmm. Put it, you know, put it on in the newspaper and, you know, got like $600. And I'm like, Back then, before there was any platform to even do it, my mind was already working in like, what, what do we not use that I could turn into money yeah. so I can, so I can not have to go get a real job. <laughs> yeah, I understand that you were an entrepreneur, entrepreneur before eBay made more entrepreneurs. That's true. And like when I was a teenager, I'm the second of four kids, so I was always mothering my younger siblings and was just a natural babysitter. I started babysitting when I was 11. Yeah. And I just, one time I got paid $12 and I just thought I was a millionaire. I was like, <laughs> I got all this money. And I just, you know what I would do with that babysitting money? I would go up to the drugstore and buy um, magazines mm -hmm. and perfume and makeup and <laughs> <laughs> all, all that 80s stuff that they don't make anymore. <laughs> I would see the ads like for shampoo on TV and be like, oh, my hair can look like that. I can look just like Brooke Shields if I go buy the shampoo. And that's what I spent my babysitting money on. And I was, was totally sucked into whole, the whole marketing thing. But I never got that. That wasn't me when I because I was where I, I, I grew up around auctions. My parents and I used to go to an auction in the town where I, where I grew up. They had one like, it was either like every Friday or every other Friday night. And I was, I don't know, 11 years old, 12, 11, 12. And I, I went up and I asked the owners of the auction house if I could set up barrels to collect aluminum cans. And they allowed me to collect the aluminum cans from the auction every week and the, the newspapers and things. Because back then you could get money for newspapers. And, um, yep. I, we used yeah. to do paper drives at yeah. school. Yeah. And so I, I did that. And by the time I was 13, I had saved up enough because I wanted a 35 millimeter camera. And so I saved up all that money and then a little bit of gift money that my grandmother had given me. And I bought my, my Minolta X370 35 millimeter camera with all the lenses. Mm -hmm. And I still have that camera. And I joke that that's, I started, there was my entrepreneurship. Yours was babysitting and mine was can collecting. <laughs> well, I did the newspaper thing too. Our, at school, they would have paper drives okay. and there, there would be awards for the, the person, the student who brought the most paper, the most pounds or whatever. So I went around to all my neighbors with my little sister's wagon and I collected, you know, I asked them to save newspapers and I collected them and we got them up to the school and I won a few times, you know, um, I don't even remember what the prize was. It was just the fact that anybody could win. It was like, well, yeah. then I could win. Um, and then my brother and I used to go and collect bottles. Um, we would go to where they were building the new subdivisions mm -hmm. and we, where the construction workers would just throw their bottles and oh, you know, yeah. aside. And we collected those. And that was back when you could get money for bottles. Yeah. So um, one time he found a wallet that had like $200 in it. Wow. He was going to keep it. And I told my parents and they're like, yeah. they found the guy. He came to our house and <laughs> got his wallet. And it was like, you know, that was a good lesson. But um, yeah, I think he, <laughs> we've really digressed into newspapers and bottles. But um, <laughs> I think you just have to have that spark where you can see opportunities anywhere. Yeah. And like you said, yeah, eBay has its problems, mm -hmm. but where else can you do this? There, there are other reselling sites, of course, but yeah. you know, eBay has the most people, has the most mm -hmm. buyers. So, and some of them are really good. I've, you know, it, you, we, we, we always hear about the bad of eBay, I think, 
but I've actually been very fortunate. It just matter of fact, we just had a um, another item that I found um, in the barn. It was just a small paper item that had, it was patterns for like plywood to make like outside statues, you know, out of plywood from the 60s. Hmm. And in my feedback, um, we I just sold it. And in my feedback, the person said, I wanted to thank you. When I was something like when I was a kid, my father used to make the snowman, uh, the snowman house for us every, for every Christmas. And my father just died. And we decided we wanted to keep on the tradition. And you had basically, you know, you had what we needed. So, you know, there, there's those. And then we, I sold my grandmother's telephone that was in the house when I used to visit her. And, um, and it was a specialty one. It had a receiver because she was hard of hearing. My grandparents were deaf and it had a receiver that you could turn the volume up and it was outside of New York city. And, um, I sold it just a couple of months ago and the guy bought it, lived outside of New York city, sent us a picture of him of it on the, on the, on the wall stating it made the perfect addition to his retro 1970s kitchen. Oh, wow. And so it was getting used because it was avocado green. Of course. Yeah. You know, harvest so. gold, avocado <laughs> green with mushroom wallpaper. <laughs> oh, oh, memories, bad memories. <laughs> I know. And the um, the little phone book thing that was metal and you you slide the slider oh, yeah. up the letter and then it pops open with your, you remember those? It wasn't I do remember those, there. but I'm thinking, oh, I wonder if there's one in my bar now. <laughs> Yeah, people, I found those that have writing, that have people's names and addresses, and yeah. they sell just fine, and yeah. I really see that cursive is, handwriting is a, a lost art, mm -hmm. so people will buy things with, you know, cursive handwriting, nice penmanship, yeah. just for the historical value, yeah. it doesn't even matter what it says, it's just you know, oh, here's a, a letter dated 1962 that my mom sent me at summer camp or whatever the item is. And it's got the postmark and it's got um, the beautiful penmanship mm -hmm. and that that's collectible, you know, 10 years from now, um, <laughs> 20 years from now, when all the people who know how to write in cursive are no longer here <laughs> mm -hmm. um, because these millennials they can't write it and they can't read it and it's not being taught. Yeah, that's what I heard. I, I mean, don't have kids, so. It's like calligraphy, so it's like art. Yeah. Which it shouldn't be. <laughs> Boy, if they saw mine, it wouldn't be art. <laughs> <laughs> I had an aunt who um, always, she didn't have any children and mm -hmm. she would send my siblings and I books and, and different things for our birthdays and she had the most beautiful penmanship and always wrote in red, hmm. which is frowned upon. Yeah. But that was her, she was being defiant. You know, that was her passive aggressive thing was to write in red. <laughs> so do what you gotta do. Anyway, um, I talked about starting a mega size $500 video series on YouTube, which that is coming. And you said, Hey, can we use all sales? <laughs> so yeah. I, I want to give you the opportunity to talk about your highest selling item. <laughs> well, I actually have two. That's the funny thing. I was trying to break the, the one I was talking to you about. I was, that was the one I was trying to break the original one. Um, when I lived in Wyoming, my highest, highest, not my favorite, but my highest when I lived in Wyoming, there was a pharmacy that went out of, uh, was going out of business and they were selling things they had in it. And I went to the auction and the auctioneer starts with this item and I look in it and I knew what it was. It was a special metal, special medical, specialty medical um, cushion. It was like for pressure points and sores and things. And so the auctioneer starts it off and he goes, he'll give me $5 for this flotation device. Okay. I didn't even know what it was. No, he didn't. So I, 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 and they weren't cheap. So I, because my former husband used one. So I put my hand up and I got it for $5. I figured I'll just give it to him. You know, if it's not, he can use it. Um, so I took it back. Cause at that time I was, I had, I had been separated. I took it back to my apartment 
And at, lo and behold, it was not the cushion. It was a full blown twin size medical mattress Oh, that I got for five bucks. And I had just lost my job and I was trying to get back to the East coast to go to family weddings. I sold that mattress for $800. <gasps> Wow. And the guy sent me and said, do you have any more? And then the, the competitive bidder asked me, do you have any more? It was a one-off, you know, mm -hmm. because they're not cheap. And so yeah, I, I, that one was $5 and I, I sold it for 800, but nice. um, yeah, it was nice. And I got, I paid for my trip to New York and back. Excellent. <laughs> but my favorite that was the one I, what I was talking to you about was I went to an auction out here and um an estate auction and there was a set of dishes nobody was bidding on i don't know why um but i i i'm like fine i'll take a box lot kind of thing i'll do it whatever and i put my hand up and it was five dollars and i paid five dollars for these gorgeous set of art deco dishes looked them up they're from the 30s art deco and 63 pieces in this set it was, you know, the, the family member, I even knew the family and it was their parent, grandparents, 63 pieces. And I brought it home and looked this thing up and I'm like, I don't want to split this. Everybody's like, split it up, split it up. I, I remember having, I remember Brian Rappaport even saying, split it up. <laughs> you know? Okay. Okay. <laughs> and I, but I just, I didn't have the heart because it went together. Right. So I put it on, I put it on eBay for $900 and waited to see what would happen. And then I wrapped every single piece and I had a hundred dollars shipping on this thing. I wrapped every single piece of that and put it in the boxes. And then I got an offer for 750. I took it. And the guy lived again, outside, not far from where my mother was from in New, in New Jersey. And I was like, ah, you know, this is 63 pieces of dishes and lots of weight. I drove the seven hours to deliver those dishes. Really? I drove to New Jersey because actually I was going to go to Maryland to pick up something for my cousin. So, but I drove the seven hours to New Jersey to deliver those dishes to the guy that was restoring an arts and crafts home. And he didn't want a real set of feminine dishes. And these were not, they were geometric. So I sold that $5 set for $750 plus a hundred dollars shipping. And when he, I, when he got them, when I delivered them and he opened and checked them, he, after I left, he sent me a picture of putting him in, had to put him in his display cabinet. Oh, perfect. So those are my two best. It was, yeah, was, that was probably my favorite though. And see, that's the part that you can't get with retail arbitrage. Um, again, if that's for you, great. But I love that rehoming aspect. Of, yeah. This was over here. Somebody didn't want it. I paid hardly anything or maybe nothing for it. And now it's over here. And this person is just thrilled with it. And yeah. you got to be part of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's great. Yeah. And like I, if I hadn't, if I didn't have my great grandmother's dishes, I would have. I would have kept them because they were gorgeous. But if you find a set, if you find any pieces, I can't remember what it's called now, but it's, they're like cream colored with silver accents on them. Buy them. <laughs> hey. It's Community China Doville pattern. D-E-A-U-V-I-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Okay. And it gets, it gets good money. If you don't mind shipping breakables it gets good money <laughs> yeah well I don't and I guess it's when there's 63 pieces of it which you didn't even <laughs> sorry 67 when you didn't even want to ship that you drove it over there <laughs> yeah it just worked out thankfully because I had one cousin that was having her first baby and my other cousin had just had her third baby and so I, I drove the dishes over and drove down like three hours to her after the seven hours, three hours to her place and picked up a truckload of stuff for my other cousin. So it, you know, it just, it just kind of worked out. But. Now you do a lot of research on unusual items. What mm -hmm. do you find are the best methods for actually finding information? Um, it really depends on what it is. I do use therapy. Um, 
And sometimes it's just a random search of a description of what it is on Google. You know, I might say a six by 14 black square pottery with three holes in it or whatever. And sometimes it is very random that I just manage to find whatever it is. Um, Do you ever use that? What is this group on Facebook? No, never heard of it. Okay, well, and you might want to join just to help people identify things because I think they're almost up to 200,000 members now. And it's Mm. exactly what it says. What is this? Unusual item identification. And people will post pictures of things Mm. they found and they don't know what it is. And then other people in the group will say, oh yeah, that's a a blacksmith thing or whatever, you know? And so the people who answer the questions are very knowledgeable. They have estate sale backgrounds, antique store backgrounds, or they just have knowledge in one very specific area. But it's a very helpful community um, when you find things that either you don't know what they are, you can't read the signature on pottery, or Mm -hmm. you can't find that hallmark anywhere. Um, That's a very helpful group. And of course, sometimes you don't get an answer but sometimes you get something in five minutes and they're like, oh, this is a blah, 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 blah. And, and you get your answer really fast. Just, I love eBay. I really do. I'm, I'm one of the probably as weird people I, I, I talk about. I'll tell people all the time I'm a reseller and, you know, and, I, and, and whatever else I do. And, and they all go, really? Or do they give you the, well, you know, my grandmother has this Tiffany lamp. How much would it cost for you to sell that for me? That's what I get when I say I'm a reseller. I got that from a couple of friends, not many. Um, I, I did, we get that and they, I haven't I haven't sold their stuff yet. Um, and then I have another friend that's actually started selling because of it. So there you she's, go. she's got her own little she shed and she's going to start selling. So, and then I have another good friend actually I met and it was, we bonded over the fact that we both sold on eBay. So, so every once in a while, we'll send each other texts and go, what'd you sell today? You know? Oh, there you go. You need a, a buddy like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Or you're in a thrift store. Oh my gosh, look what I just found, you know, and you're so excited. You have to share yeah. that with somebody who gets it. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm glad. It's why I'm glad I have my mom and my husband because my mom just cracks up. She sent me a text. The other, we live on the same property. So it's not like she's not outside my door practically, but she sends me a text the other day that goes, you sell the strangest things. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what keeps it interesting. Yeah. So back to telling people that you're a reseller. Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. Depends mm-hmm. on the situation and just make up a profession. So some days I'm an FBI agent. <laughs> some days I am a brain surgeon. Uh, some days I am living on my inheritance and I don't do anything. So it just depends on if you want to have that conversation. You can be anything you want if it's a stranger. (laughs) Then you you should do my other job. You'd be very good at it. Oh, what? Yeah. You were going to talk about your other job, right? Because eBay is... I I actually, I do undercover video work. I'm a mystery shopper. And how does that work? um, I wear the same equipment that the police wear, the cam body cameras. Oh. And they don't know I'm coming in and I do a lot of different things. I'll do new homes. I'll do apartments. I do restaurants. I'll do jewelry stores. It just depends. And so when people say that, that mystery shopping is a scam, it is not. Um, it's just, you got to be careful of the company. So, and then some of the things I have to do is I have to change my profession every time. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes I joke because my, um, I have an uncle that, uh, was a professor. So I used his background one time. I would go in and say, I'm an associate professor of biochemistry and molecular pharmacology. And they go, they don't They're even not going to ask you anything because they don't no. even know what that is. <laughs> or I, one, one time I was, I worked in the forensics lab because oh. I watch all these crime shows because I just love how they figure stuff out. And it's like, yep. I could be that, you know, be careful because you're, you're dropping hair everywhere, everywhere you go. <laughs> Someday that might sell on eBay too. I don't know. That's true. So do you, you do retail and all kinds of stores? 
Um, yeah, I'm majority of what I do anymore is um, homes and apartments. Um, and so I audit them. Um, sometimes they know I'm there. Sometimes they know I, they don't know I'm there. Okay. So, but I, I, I like both of them because they both, they both work around, you know, my schedules. I can do eBay around it and I can do it around eBay and I can still be lying on a beach in Bermuda. So when you're going over to that apartment complex, you check out, oh, is there a thrift store near here that I can get at the same time? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I get to take expenses off. (laughs) That's right. I do that everywhere I go. I'm like, what's near there? Okay, yeah, I can drop by that on the way back. Then you can write off the mileage because you actually did do work. We found one of our favorite thrift stores between here and my husband, my mother-in-law's house, which is six hours away. And we found one of the, every time we stopped at places clean, it's a Goodwill, immaculately clean. And, and they always seem to have something good. It's amazing. And I'm like, so we, every time this is like, okay, we, this is where we stop. This is where we go to the restroom and we shop. We're in there. That one we're in for an hour. That's, that's long for me. So I think your objective, everybody's objective is different. And when I'm out thrifting, it's a break from the computer because I could literally be on the computer 24 hours a day, creating things, listing things, you know, and so that's my outing. And strangely enough, our Goodwills, they play fun music. The ones <laughs> I go to have clean bathrooms. You know, it's, it's a nice experience and I don't mind being in there for a long time. And they're usually putting more things out. So while I'm over here looking at the sweaters, I can see, oh, she's putting stuff in the back and she's mm-hmm. done. I'm going to go check that out. And sometimes I hit certain areas twice just to see what's been put out and that kind of thing. But it is, it's like an outing for me. It's like going to an amusement park. I just yeah, love exactly. it. <laughs> that's what, that's what, it's estate sales. I like estate sales. I love auctions. Having grown up with them since I was a child, I love, I love auctions. That's, you know, that it's a joy for me. And, and that's, again, that's with the, that's eBay, you know. I am never going to be Casey Vetterly. I, I have no desire to do skis and I have no desire to do electronics, but I can still learn from Casey and what he does. And the same thing with Brian Rappaport. Brian sells a lot of stuff on there that I would never pick up, but boy, I can learn from him, you know, and that's the thing as one of your sellers on there said, you know, it's a small sale, but you know what? My husband and I joke, we are going to $5 our way out of our mortgage. That's right. Yeah. So you can learn from, you can learn from anybody on eBay. You can learn from anybody. It's that's, that's like I said, that's the, that's, that's the fun part of, of eBay. Yeah, And me. I do love all the communities, the, yeah. the YouTube channels and the Facebook groups where everybody's sharing information. Because when we started back in the early two thousands, mm-hmm. late nineties, mm-hmm. um, there was, you were just on your own. Good luck to you. Yeah. And like we said earlier, you have to have the right people to share your victories with because yeah. they don't get it. If they're not selling and you come home with that bag of stuff and you pull out this thing and you're like, oh my gosh, I found this Ralph Lauren four ply cashmere sweater that was made in Hong Kong and it's vintage and you're so excited and they have no idea. You might as well be talking about, what did you say, microbiology or whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, they yeah. don't, and my mom would just be like, oh, honey, that's wonderful. You know, she didn't know what I was talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't know that Ralph Lauren one either. I would probably glaze over on that one well, because just, I, hate, I hate clothes. I hate doing clothes. Well, okay. So it's something like a mid-century modern brass thing that sells for $200 and you're just so excited about it. And to somebody yeah. else, it's like, that's just a pair of bookends. Why are you yeah, so excited? Exactly. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I'm like, I see green. I don't know about you, but I see green. Right. When I see those <laughs> aisles at Goodwill that are just, stuff is just falling everywhere. And it's the biggest jumble of stuff. I'm like, ooh, goody. I got 30 minutes of fun ahead of me. I'm going to look through all this. <laughs> and you just don't get that with retail arbitrage. You just, yeah. um, you're right. It, it's a boredom buster. It, it's yeah. Now I do look at the grocery store and whenever I'm at a retail store at what is on clearance and something that looks unusual. 
especially if you live in a test market city, you want to mm -hmm. be on the lookout for those things. I don't think Atlanta is, but we live Columbus in Columbus does. Oh, Columbus, Columbus is? Okay. Yeah, Columbus does it. I know for fast food, for sure. Um, I don't know about other things, but I know they are for fast food. Well, and we lived in Charlotte for six years in the, the late 90s and, um, sorry, the late 80s. And I would find all kinds of things that my family back in Atlanta never saw. Mm -hmm. And then we figured out we were a test market city and that's very valuable if you can figure out those things that people will pay Mm -hmm. two, three, four times retail for because they don't have them. And um, it's just always fun doing these on Saturday mornings and having our coffee and talking eBay <laughs> or whatever you're having. <laughs> yeah, I don't drink coffee. Okay. Um, Sorry. <laughs> so the final question is, mm -hmm. what kind of advice would you give to people who are struggling or just starting out? Keep struggling it gets easier um, because I struggle. I still struggle. Like I said, I'm not a person I can list all the time. I don't even list every day, but I've found that if I just do one thing every day, it keeps me going. So um, that's, I mean, really, that's it. I hate to say it, but keep struggling, but find somebody to help you struggle. Um, you know, like we were talking about, it really does make a difference to have somebody that enjoys it with you. Um, because eventually, all of a sudden, you're going to realize it's no longer a struggle. Just keep going. Just roll with the punches when it comes with eBay changing their, their policies and their rules. And Because unless you're doing it wrong, you're still making money. Okay. And that's, you know, that's the way I look at it. I make, I'm making money and I, get to, and I get to live how I want to live. Do you use your eBay money for anything specific or does it just go into the general pot of income? Um, at this point, well, at one point we kept it. Um, it was general because my husband had lost his job a couple of times. Um, but now it, we, we keep it in one, one pot. And that is because my mom helps us. Um, we use it for, we're going to keep it for maintenance on this property for things that are joint maintenance. Um, like if we want to put a fence up, or if we want, you know, we need some groundwork done. So it's joint maintenance for the, for the property because, you know, 13 acres requires work. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, and it's, and I'm, and I'm not a full-time seller. We are not full-time sellers. Um, we have about, we range between 450 and 550 items in our store. And some of them have been there a long time. And last year after deductions and, you know, all that kind of stuff were taken out, we average, I average about a thousand dollars a month. Okay. So, and it's, it's because we buy everything and everything, the income stays here, but we just do it for the maintenance. But yeah, it's about a thousand dollars a month. And, you know, and a lot of those are five, 10, $15 items. So if you can't afford the item, that's maybe going to buy, you know, it's going to be $50, but it's going to net you 500, maybe then start with that dollar item. That's only going to net you 10 or $12. You can snowball it. Yeah. There's a comfort level. I was yeah. that person for a long time because I was a single mom and I just needed to make sure that I had cash flow to pay for bills. And so it made me very nervous to say, Oh, you know, paying $10 for something, it might take a few months to sell. Do I really want to do that? Mm -hmm. So it, it's a comfort level that you have to get to yeah. with what you're investing. Mm -hmm. um, and one side note back to, I don't know how people list things all day long. <laughs> um, now, when I get home from my shopping adventure, I'm very excited. I immediately clean everything, get it ready, you know, process it. So the next day I can jump in and start doing it. So mm -hmm. it, it's not like, oh, I hate listing and I hate that. No, it's just everybody has their limits. Two hours a day, whatever it is for you. Yeah. That you don't want to burn out because when you burn out, then you don't want to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. You have to make those boundaries for yourself so that it stays fun. Yeah. You know, like As I said, it may be one listing a day for a while. Like going to the gym for some people is fun, but when you do it for eight hours a day, it's not fun anymore. Mm -mm. You know, so you have to figure out your 
threshold of what works for you and keeps you motivated and energized and focused and on task and all that stuff. But um, if you're one of those people that lists 20, 50 items a day, I commend you because mm -hmm. I cannot sit there that long. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like, I got to get up and do laundry. I got to get up and make a sandwich. I got to get up and do something else. Go get the mail, whatever it is. <laughs> And that's why eBay works for, for, for different people. Exactly. It does. Okay. Well, um, do you have big plans this morning? Um, no, but now that you've said it, I might end up going over to the thrift store. Cause yeah, I put that little seed in your brain. Now you got to get it out. <laughs> gives, gives my husband. Yeah. My husband would probably be like, yeah, I'll go with you. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> Well, no, not really. I got others. I got, you know, I got to clean up a few things and put things on myself. And um, I got five more items I got to, we've got to ship for Monday. So yeah, I got to get my shipping done and get to the post office. But um, I try to, I try to go every day. Um, and I don't have pickup because um, we have like two or three different male people that share this route that mm -hmm. I'm on. So I never know when they're coming. And yeah, we, if, if I'm leaving, I don't like to leave it outside. So we built a box around because there's two mailboxes. Oh. So we built a box that's, you know, like three feet long and a couple feet deep so that we could put the packages in there. <laughs> oh, good for you. That was smart. I really enjoy doing these on Saturday mornings, but some mm -hmm. people are like, no way. That's my garage sale day. That's my mm -hmm. estate sale. And so we'll do it on Sunday mornings. But, um, I just, I look forward to this every week, like who I get to talk to and yeah. meet all these people that have been in the group forever and just have a conversation. So I really appreciate you agreeing to do it and being brave enough to <laughs> come on here and field all my questions. <laughs> you know, you wanted to have a chat with a friend and, you know, have coffee and talk about eBay. Well, I've gotten a lot of good feedback on these podcasts just because mm -hmm. it's, it's casual talk, you know, it's not teaching you anything about eBay rules and it's just everybody has a different experience and the listeners really like they feel like they're right here with us just having this mm -hmm. conversation so yeah. um thank you for coming on this podcast Tina and you guys can find Tina Wozniak any relation um actually it's pronounced Wozniak I'm but sorry. Uh, Yes, yeah, actually, no, I did the genealogical research. And unless it was past the fifth cousin stage, then no, he Steve Wozniak was not related to my husband's family. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I, I tried, that. I really tried. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, well, you can find Tina on the Facebook group. And thanks again for coming on this morning. And we'll see you online. Bye. <laughs> that wraps up episode 41 the last episode of 2021 i have many more guests lined up for next year 2022 thank you to all the listeners out there who tune in every week and i want to wish all of you a happy healthy prosperous and safe new year talk to you next year bye